Hello. Today we discuss about another distance between clusters, which is the Ward's method. This is based on the sum of squared errors or SSC for a cluster. So how do we define it? The SSC for a cluster CI with centroid mu i is defined in this manner. We take the summation over all the points of the cluster, the distance of the point from the centroid. And this is summed up for all the points. For the whole clustering, that is C1 to Cm, the SSC is just the summation of all the cluster wise SSC. The cluster wise SSC is the summation x minus mu i whole squared and we sum it for all the clusters from i equal to 1 to m. Now we take an example and see how we compute the SSC for a cluster. So we have this formula 5 points and the two clusters C1 and C2. Now the centroid for C1 we can see this is composed of the data points 1, 1, which is this x1, and 2, 1, which is x2. So the center of this is mu1, which is 1.51, trivial to compute. For the C2, we have three data points. So again, we take the feature wise uh, mean centroid, uh, we compute, and we get it as 4.3 and 3. So we compute the distances of the points in the cluster from the centroid. So x1 with mu1 and x2 with mu, uh, mu1 because these both belong to this c1. And we can see because for this small example, the distances are also having small values. So the difference of 1 and 1.5 is 0.5. So square of 0.5 is 0.25. Similarly here it is 0.25. So we get the sum of 0.5 because the second component, y component doesn't have any uh, distance. Similarly, for the second cluster, we will find the distances of x3 with mu2, x4 with mu2 and x5 with mu2. It's a very simple computation and we can do it to get the SSE value of 2.78. Now for the clustering that is both C1, C2, we have this summation over both the clusters. So we add these two and we get SSE for the clustering C1, C2 as 3.28. So we have seen how the sum squared error for a cluster, a single cluster or for the whole clustering that the collection of clusters can be computed. So now the Ward's method. We also call it the minimum variance. The uh, We define the distance between two clusters as the increase in the sum of sum squared errors SSC when the two clusters are merged. Now let Ni be the number of points in CI. And mu i is uh, defined as the centroid of ci. So we can simplify the right hand squared or uh, right hand side of our formula, the first formula which we wrote for SSE, x minus mu i squared. We expand it. We can see that x and mu are both vectors because in all. Uh, probability in real life applications you would have data points with multiple features. So we expand this, uh, the squared is opened up in this manner and we get the final value as x transpose x minus ni mu i transpose into mu i. So the distance between clusters is defined as the change in SSC value when we merge two clusters ci and cj to Cij. So this delta Cicj is the change in SSCIJ which is SSCIJ that is the sum squared error of the combined cluster, the Ijth cluster 
and uh, the difference between uh, SSC and SSC IJ both because we have combined CI and CJ to CIJ. So this is the the change in SSC value. Further, we write it in this manner based on our this equation SSCI is equal to x minus mu i squared. So we are taking here for the combined cluster Cij the data point L is defined as denoted as L. So L belonging to Cij L minus mu ij this is just a notation for the centroid of the cluster C i j okay and l is the data the variable covering all the data points and ssc for i is x element of c i x minus mu i squared and similarly this okay so this was our original equation which we had taken okay so now, before moving further, we'll note some important observations that CI and CJ are disjoint. In this present clustering, we are not assuming overlapping clusters. In some scenarios, some applications, we would in future consider those as well. However, here CI and CJ are disjoint. So, when we merge them, the number of elements in Cij is simply the sum of Ni and J. We will uh, we'll, uh, see that this is true. Also, the center of Cij can be computed in this manner. Again, this is very simple arithmetic. And finally, the dot product of the L data from Cij with itself LTL, this whole dot product is nothing but the summation of the dot, dot products of X elements of CI and the Y elements from CJ. X and Y are simply variables denoting uh, the data from CI, X for CI and Y for CJ. So when we combine these two, add these two, we get this dot product. For the CIJ. So they have, we have certain observations here. Now we substitute these, these observations 3 and 5 to 7 in 4. So the simplified delta CIJ is this. So it has come out so simple. The centroid distance with the weight. See the words distance measure comes out as a weighted version. See, Ni is the number of data points. Ni is the number of data points in Ci and Nj is the number of data points in Cj. So, this is the weighting or the weightage which we apply to the centroid distance of Ci Cj. Right? So now, just for a recap, how does the agglomerative hierarchical clustering method work? It starts by letting each object form its own cluster and we compute the distance matrix. Now for the merging step, it finds the two clusters that are closest to each other according to Ward's distance measure. So we are going through this hierarchical clustering, keeping in mind that we will be using the Ward's distance measure. And we are finding the clusters closest to each other, which means we want to minimize this delta CI CJ. And again, the merging continues into larger clusters until we get the, uh, the completion criteria, termination conditions are satisfied. Now we take an example where we have, we are at a point of clustering where we have two clusters, I'm uh, sorry, three clusters. C1, C2, C3 and now we have again the same points. So this is the initial clustering given to us. C1 comprising of X1, X2, 
C2 comprising of X3 and C3 of X4, X5. The coordinates are here. So, which clusters to merge? We have three clusters and for the next stage of clustering, we want to merge two. So, we want to make this decision based on the Watts distance, which is this formula. So, we write down the, the centroids for the three clusters. C1 is 1.51. C2 is its own data point. So, that is the also the centroid. And for this, because we have 5, 3, this is one coordinate. And we have 4, 4. So, we get these points. Okay. So, the number of data points in each cluster is also written. So, delta C1, C2, simply we put in the, substitute in the values is obtained as 4.83. That is the watts distance between C1 and C2 is 4.83. Between C1, C3 is 15.25, C1 and C3. As a change in SSE when we merge C1, C3 is this. And for C1 and, uh, sorry, C2 and C3, C1, C2 we have already computed 4.83. For C2, C3 it is 1.67. So, this distance being the shortest, we choose to merge C2, C3. So, we have seen that we have uh, come across many distance uh, equations or distance measures between clusters to choose the uh, clusters to merge at every stage of clustering. And in this video, we went through the Ward's distance, which is based on the minimum variance. So, we take the clusters under consideration and we find their distance. So, we find the distance using this formula of weighted centroid distance. See, this is the centroid distance and this is the weight. So, for each pair of clusters, we if we compute this and we find the smallest, that is our pair of mergers, uh, clusters to be merged at that point. So, I hope this video was useful for you. Thanks for watching. We shall meet again for more videos. Thank you.